Hello and welcome to Adelaide Airport. And later this morning, I'm gonna be flying back to Sydney with Jetstar and an A320. But beforehand, let's check out this aircraft behind me. It's a Vickers Vami bomber. And back in 1919, this flew from Great Britain through to Australia, or Darwin in particular, um, to win a 10,000 pound competition. There are four Australians on board and it took them 28 days. Now it's interesting to compare this with now where you can fly that same distance in a new 787 Dreamliner with Qantas, non-stop from London through to Perth in a lot more comfort and over about 17 hours. We really live in an amazing time where aviation technology has progressed so much and it's also a lot cheaper and that's in part because of the low cost carriers. So speaking about that, let's go and check in at the airport terminal. Uh, excuse me, do you know where the Jetstar check-in is? Yeah, hi man. Uh, straight through there, just on the right and straight through. Cool, thanks for your help, thanks. He looks familiar. Hmm. As soon as you enter the terminal, you'll need to head up the escalators to departures, and up there you'll find it version on the left and Qantas on the right. Jetstar are just a little bit further on after Qantas, and they have these novel self-check-in machines. I had already checked in online, although I had to print off my bag tags for my checked luggage. After attaching it, it was then off to the automatic bag drop, where I realised they only open about two hours before the departure. So, 10 minutes later, it opened and my bags were off to Sydney. Next up, it was off through security, which, as you can see, was a total shambles, with only one security path operating. There was a premium lane for business and status passengers, but otherwise it would have been around 35-40 minutes, uh, which seems pretty poor, and that's Adelaide Airport's fault and not the airlines themselves. But having said that, I was really impressed overall with my first visit to this airport. It's bright and open and there seemed to be a reasonable selection of shops with the usual bargain basement, $8 coffees and $15 muffins. If you turn right and then it's a little bit of a walk, you'll find the Qantas lounges, which is their combined Qantas club and business lounge. So one of the advantages of flying Jetstar if you have status with Qantas is that you still get access to some of the lounges so you can meet some of the locals. Cheers, it's still a great flight. Oops, that was worked well. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> For those of you who may not realise, that guy, who I keep running into, was Adelaide's own aviation YouTuber, Dennis Bunnick. He has heaps of great aviation videos on his channel, and I'll put a link to it below. I'll give you a quick tour around the lounge, beginning with this work area, and there's also a buffet available. This was around 12 midday, so this is what you can expect to have for lunch. There's also a bar which opened at noon, and there's a barista all day taking orders. After a prolonged argument about how terrible the 787's electronic dimming windows are, and since I've got editorial control over this video, I'm happy to say that Dennis now agrees with me that they're terrible. Look, I know they're a contentious issue, especially when crews lock them in the dark mode, so please comment below with your thoughts. Now here's our aircraft, a 10 year old Airbus A320-200, which was delivered brand new to Jetstar in 2010. These aircraft make up the backbone of the Jetstar domestic fleet, while the 787 Dreamliners run the international fleet. And on that topic, make sure you check out my channel for both my 787 economy and business class reviews. And to continue with the cross promotion, on the right now is this little Fokker 50, which I flew on earlier that morning, and my vlog from that flight is also on my channel. Now the plane was already pretty crowded, and because I didn't want to film too many strangers' faces, I've cut out most of my boarding footage, but anyway, here's my seat 5A. This aircraft comes in an all economy configuration with seats in a 3-3 layout. Overhead, there are individual air vents, which I always really appreciate, and as you can see, legroom is tight, and for reference's sake, I'm around 180 centimeters tall. But most importantly, for this little av geek, there's great views of the wing and engine. Now, I did have to pay $16 extra for this seat, and while Jetstar promoted as giving you an option to exit quicker, I just wanted to have a better view, and spoiler alert, the views crossing the coastline just after takeoff were pretty fantastic. The doors were eventually closed and we backed out. Now sit back and enjoy some great takeoff views. And by the way, I hope you're watching all of my newer videos in 4K quality. We spun around and then we headed directly for Sydney. Now being a low cost carrier, they don't provide any complimentary food or drinks, although here's the menu, which you can order from. And I'm fairly sure the food will look 
pretty identical to these pictures, of course. In the end of the day, when you fly a full service airline, you're paying for the food with a purchase ticket. So if you're price sensitive, having the option of saving a little by bringing your own food is fine. As well as food, they also sell amenities such as blankets, uh, USB cords, and even model airplanes, which is exciting. I should point out that there are no USB plugs or power points in this aircraft, although I believe that the 787s do, so they probably just use the same menus on the international routes. Unsurprisingly, being a low-cost carrier, the seat is fairly squishy, so it was a bit tight when I was trying to get some work done on my laptop. I ended up having to give up as I had to contort my arms to type and I ended up just watching footage from a scenic flight I did in New Zealand last year and that video is also on my channel. There's no in-flight Wi-Fi and as you can see there aren't any in-seat TV screens so you'll have to bring your own entertainment. Now keen plane spotters will have noticed that the winglets on this aircraft are considerably smaller than on the newer A320s. In fact the new ones are so much bigger that Airbus's marketing department have given them a new name, the Sharklet. Here's a picture of it retrofitted into one of the A320s in Sydney, and it now comes as standard on the A320neo. Essentially, it just makes the aircraft slightly more fuel efficient, and of course, Jetstar are very price sensitive. Although having said that, I must admit I'm a little surprised they haven't retrofitted it to their entire fleet for that reason. We cross New South Wales on a dead straight line, and here's the town of Narandara from 36,000 feet, and the Murrumbidgee River running through it. I actually lived here for 12 months, and I remember riding around looking up at planes, flying over me and thinking I'd love to be on one, and here I am. Just near Gunning, we began our descent down into Sydney, although sadly, it was completely obscured by both cloud and smoke. As many of you know, there are unprecedented bushfires all around Australia at the moment, and a lot of people are doing it very tough. We only broke through the cloud and smoke as we lined up for our approach into Sydney Airport. So how was the flight? Look, it was actually pretty fun. Jetstar cop a lot of criticism when their flights are delayed, but to be honest with you, they're a low cost carrier and their limited service recovery is what makes them cheap. I'll use a car analogy. If you want a car that will work perfectly and then if it doesn't, you'll expect it to be fixed quickly, buy a Mercedes. If you like me can't afford one of those, you buy a Ford. It'll probably be fine, but if the warranty has expired, you'll need to pay for the repairs yourself, and we just accept that as reasonable. That's the trade-off you get for paying a lot less in the first place. Now, if you buy a new Mercedes and it breaks, you're absolutely entitled to complain, but if you buy a six-year-old Ford, well, hmm. Look, I accept it's frustrating, there's no doubt about that, but these things happen, and there's no point taking out your frustrations on the ground crew. They're just doing their jobs and probably have nothing to do with the delay or cancellations. And as everyone who works in the service industry knows, if you're nice, they may actually pull some strings and do you a favour. Now, I actually recall my mother being on a Jetstar flight a few years ago and she really had to take it, but it was cancelled. So they actually moved her on to a Qantas flight. Now, I should quickly add that she's not a frequent flyer at all and had just paid for a cheap sale ticket. Now, as I said at the start, we really live in a privileged time where I can fly over 1,000 kilometers in one and a half hours for a weekend, see friends, and then go home. And that Jetstar flight only cost me $200. And just to think that 100 years ago, the flight from London to Darwin that I mentioned earlier took 28 days and an actual flying time of 124 hours in the air at an average of 85 kilometers an hour. And I can assure you that even I was more comfortable squashed into my A320 than they would have been on that old Vickers Vimy. So, with an exact flight time of an hour and 36 minutes, we landed into Sydney five minutes early, and after picking up my bag, I was off home. The plane was adequate, and the crew were friendly during my brief interactions with them, and the views were pretty nice. I got home safely, so I can't complain. Now before I finish off with some bloopers with Dennis, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for many more aviation videos from around Australia and the world. I'm uploading new videos all the time, so make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you another time. It's a Vikers Vicky's Vom Vomi Vomer. I knew this was going to happen. What is it? A Vi Vickers, uh, Vickers, Vickers Vomi. Vickers Vomi. Vickers Vomi. Dumb the locals. Cheers. Here's Cheers. a great flight. Here's a great flight. Try it again.